Hey everyone, it's the Historical Gamer here. Uh, real quick, just to let you know, the actual gameplay of this video starts at the 8 minute mark. Uh, the next 7 minutes or so, 7 minutes and 50 seconds or so, are actually me continuing the role-playing story that we started at the beginning of our last video. So, uh, our last uh, Rule the Waves video. So if you want to listen to what happens next in our role-play, listen to the next 7 plus minutes. If you want the gameplay, jump ahead to 8 minutes in the video. His footsteps reverberated, echoing along the marble halls of the Winter Palace. Nearly empty at this hour, just a handful of guards. And yet Alexander Vasilievich Gerasimov, Deputy Minister of the Akhrana, otherwise known as the Department for Protecting the Public Security and Order, more often referred to as the Russian Secret Police, heard none of it, saw none of them. He was a man walking with a purpose, walking to a meeting with the Tsar, a meeting which he was not quite sure how it would go. He had only met the Tsar a handful of times, and in this case, he was to present his findings on the most recent death of Admiral Tortukov, the late minister of the Russian Navy. As Alexander stopped in front of the ornate doors that would lead him to his personal audience with the Tsar, a heavy weight fell upon his shoulders. He couldn't be decisive. He couldn't tell the Tsar what everybody else wanted him to say. That's because he wasn't quite sure what in his own mind had actually happened. He had been tasked with the investigation of the death of Admiral Tortukov. At first it seemed pretty straightforward. There had been three assassins who had shown up at the Admiral's residence in a docket just outside St. Petersburg. It had been surprisingly raining and thundering in the middle of January. No one was quite sure what was going on with the weather. In fact, it was unseasonably mild. St. Petersburg wasn't closed, there wasn't all that much ice on the Baltic, and the Russian fleet was at sea maneuvering at the time. According to some questionable testimony that was provided by a pair of squatters who were hiding from the storm in the Admiral's stable, three gentlemen arrived at the Admiral's residence sometime after 10 o'clock at night. One of them was allowed entry without any sign of a struggle. Shortly thereafter, there was a gunshot. The other two gentlemen raced in, there was further gunfire, and that's all that they saw. Based on the investigation of inside, the story appears to be as follows. Three assassins arrived at his home. Two of them stayed out to watch guard. One of them entered. As he was entering, the Admiral's wife came down the stairs, was startled, screamed, and then was shot. She was killed. In the ensuing distraction, the Admiral was able to overpower the original assailant and kill him. The other two, hearing the gunfire and waiting a brief period of time, then raced in, firing at everything that they could find. No fewer than ten shell fragments were found on the lower level of the Admiral's Daka. However, the Admiral had by then retreated up to the stairwell into his bedroom, with his son shielded behind him. The Admiral had a pistol, he drew the pistol on the attackers, and killed one of them as they were coming up the stairwell. The second, however, was able to kill the Admiral with a single shot to his forehead. Fortunately, the Admiral's son was spared, in a physical sense, but his mental state is yet to be fully determined. He was not able to provide much information on what happened. He was asleep upstairs in his bedroom at the time that the intruders entered. He was only aroused by the gunshot that fired his mother. He was able to come down the stairs, but then his father promptly took him back upstairs, and he really doesn't remember much beyond that, although he is certainly still shook up, and it is possible we'll get more information later on. What happened after this is known. There was actually a security detail that was responsible for the Admiral's security. Two of them were later found out passed out drunk, apparently having consumed too much alcohol. They are currently in custody and will almost certainly be executed for being drunk on duty. The other two individuals in the detail did hear the gunfire, and they did respond to it promptly. They confronted the third assassin as he was attempting to leave the home. A brief gunfight ensued, and then after a period of silence, the agents entered the home. They discovered the assassin vomiting on the floor, apparently attempting to have taken his own life with cyanide that was not effective, and they took him into custody. This is where things got a little bit confusing. Everybody assumed that the attackers were probably German. All of the papers found on the assassins was from Germany. However, two of the assassins who were killed were clearly not German, at least not ethnically. They were Asian. The individual who was captured alive, meanwhile, did speak German, but with a very thick French accent. And it quickly leaked out into the press that this individual was French. The media was now calling for war with France. But this was kind of confusing. On the one hand, the Asian assassins could make sense if they were drawn from French Indochina. 
The problem is all of the experts on the matters believe these individuals were Japanese, not Vietnamese, not Cambodian, not Laotian. No colonies currently under French control where there was a large Japanese population. But as these individuals were dead, it was more difficult to really ascertain. The alternative could have been that they were some sort of mercenary assassins, but if that was the case, who were they hired by? Certainly the Germans could have hired these individuals as freelance assassins for hire, but if they were going to do that, why would they hire someone with such an atrocious French accent and make sure that all these individuals were clad in German papers? Additionally, if the French were going to go about it, why would they hire someone with such a thick French accent? It didn't seem likely that the Japanese were involved, tensions between Russia and Japan were relatively stable, and Admiral Tortukov was a known admirer and supporter of the Japanese government. In fact, the investigation had even found some poke cards or something to that effect in his residence. No one was quite sure what they were or where they were from, but they were very clearly Japanese playing cards, and it was clear that they weren't left by these individuals as some sort of calling card for an assassin. But if it wasn't a foreign power, who could it be? The only name that rung through Alexander's head was Admiral Istorichi Gamer, the current and new head of the Russian Navy, the new minister of the Navy, the victor of the Battle of Gauntland, the hero, the toast of St. Petersburg. Would he really assassinate his own superior? He had actually called the Admiral, Admiral Tortukov, he had called Admiral Tortukov in the paper a traitor for the way that he handled the Navy. He was outspokenly furious at the Admiral for his refusal to invest in new technologies, new destroyer technologies, new submarine technologies, and the like. But bombast from inferiors to their superiors was not exactly unheard of in the Russian military, and casual threats of death would be thrown around all the time, although generally not so publicly. Still, it seemed far-fetched. Admiral Istorichi Gamer had in fact been Admiral Tortukov's executive officer on his first command. They had gone to the academy together, and they had served with great distinction together for many years. For a long time, Admiral Istorichi Gamer was in fact one of Admiral Tortukov's loudest supporters, and so their recent falling out doesn't seem to have been warranting some sort of assassination or some vendetta. So almost everybody in the Okhrana believed that it was clearly the French, and that the French were behind it, and that the Russians must seek vengeance. And now Alexander had to present his case to the Tsar. He could easily start a world war. Russia was already at war with Germany, tensions with France were running high. The words that Alexander would share with the Tsar would have a profound impact, not just on Russia, not just on France, but on the world. And just then, as he was musing in his thoughts, the doors to the palace opened, and the Tsar was waiting. Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to our Rule the Waves 2 Succession series. That was my uh, little bit of role-playing, if you will, uh, looking at the uh, investigation behind the death of Admiral Tortukov and the rise to power of... Uh, of uh, yours truly, Istorichi Gamer, the historical gamer, the new minister of the Russian Navy. We are now in war with Germany. We are likely to be at war with France before too long. You can see their tensions are basically war at any time. Fortunately for us, we won our first major engagement against the Germans. We sank three heavy cruisers, uh, but they still have 13 pre-dreadnought battleships to our nine, and they have one dreadnought battleship to our four, Things which, let's be honest, our four are not dreadnoughts by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and if the French go to war, well, then the dreadnought race is much closer. The Germans obviously are going to have a qualitative advantage over us, and the pre-dreadnought race isn't even remotely close. Uh, the cruisers were actually head on because we sank three of their heavy cruisers. But again, if the French come into the war, then we're going to be behind by a factor of almost five to one. Actually, more than five to one. Uh, and the light cruiser situation isn't much better. So we're kind of in trouble. I don't know how to lower tensions with France, but if there's a way to do it, we should probably do it. Meanwhile, we're in the process of bringing all of our ships that were in reserve fleet up to active status. All of their crews are currently poor, and that's a problem. Uh, we have our um, corvettes assigned to trade protection duties. We have ships assigned to help prepare for an invasion of Kachau Bay in China, the German colony in China. Uh, it would be great if we could take this colony from the Germans. I know we fought the Germans in a previous war. I don't 
think we took anything from them from a colonial perspective, although it would be nice to grow the Russian Empire. Um, but that's the situation right now. We have a fleet, they have a fleet, and war is already underway. We won a battle, but we are still somehow blockaded. It is January of 1908, so from role-playing perspectives, I'm going to pretend the blockade has more to do with ice than the actual German fleet, given that the Baltic is probably frozen over at this point in time, and uh, yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, it is January of 1908. Let's go ahead and move forward to February 1908 and see what happens. We do have ships under construction. We have four battleships of the Tortukov class. Maybe I should rename those. Uh, since he loved destroyers, we should name a Tortukov destroyer after him. Uh, and we also have some 20 submarines that I laid down. Those will be ready in a little over a year. The battleships are still almost three years out. And I only have a four-year commission in service. So I'm not going to get to play with any modern battleships, despite the fact that it'll be 1912 before I leave. Our current budget is negative 3.5 million but we have 65 million in the bank so at least Tortukov left us with a reasonable amount of uh, cash uh, to play around with so let's go ahead and jump forward to February and see what that brings uh, the invasion of Katso Bay is delayed due to uncertain margin of superiority that's interesting because I feel like they only have one heavy cruiser out there meanwhile the enemy has 11 operational subs we have none fortunately they didn't sink anything uh, the Russian raider uh, Palladia, uh, the light cruiser, sank a German merchant in Northeast Asia, and the Russian raider Velki Kiznev Konstantin sinks one German raider in the north in Northeast Asia. So we sank two of their merchants for 10 victory points. They sank none of our merchants. So that gives us 10 more victory points, and we're already at 3,900 versus their 1,700. So that just helps to increase the uh, margin of victory for us a little bit more. Meanwhile, patrolling ships intercept the Russian raider cruiser Vyarg, attempting to run the blockade. So we are going to go ahead and fight this battle uh, as one of our heavy cruisers attempts to break through the German blockade and get into the ocean. Apparently, I can't find the file. We can't create the ship. Uh-oh. I don't know what this is. That was weird. It, I think the German cruiser didn't generate. I don't know. We got a weird air pop-up. Um, okay. Well, I guess we'll continue. We'll move forward to March then. <laughs> Nothing happened. Don't worry. That was a weird air. Um, meanwhile, German, 11 German subs are still at sea. They must have some pretty restricted, uh, orders. Uh, oh, by the way, I need to update to 1.2. I'm still running 1.1.1, but before our next episode, we'll update to 1.2. Apparently, there's some bugs where battles occur and your fleet is split in half by enemy ships between you and your scouting squadron. That actually happened in our last battle, but, um, but anyway... Uh, meanwhile, more raiding success. Another German merchant intercepted by our ships in Northeast Asia uh, while their submarines continue to do nothing. A raid on enemy coastal shipping. So the Southern Baltic, it's a large battle. Our own forces in the area are four battleships, uh, five pre-dreadnought battleships, two heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, and 11 destroyers. The enemy has two battleships, 12 battleships, three heavy cruisers, and four light cruisers. We'll go ahead and accept battle. Okay, so what do we have coming to sea? Our objective here is to sink two enemy ships, any two enemy ships, and we do have three Imperator Magnus-class battleships in this engagement. I can't really tell. We also have uh, some of our other Estevani, however you pronounce that, uh, battle pre breadnut battleships. We have a couple of destroyers, so God bless the destroyers. They are with us. Uh, we also have some light cruisers in our formation, and uh, we're raiding enemy coastal shipping. So I'm assuming... Our objective is over here, so we're just going to kind of control the task force to head it, have it head that way. Um, what's the f speed we want to move at? There's a little bit of annoying kind of ocean sounds in the background. Um, I don't know why the text is all wonky. All right, so we've got the Russian battle division here. Everybody's making 16 knots, so we'll just kind of continue. We'll move forward to ultra fast, and we'll close in on the target here toward the coast, and hopefully we intercept some things. Unknown ship spotted. All right, so enemy ships are spotted to the south. We'll have these guys investigate. 
We'll turn the task force in that direction. Battleships as well. We'll have these guys crank up to max speed. 22 knots. Get those stokers working. Got to build up a sweat there, guys. We'll have the Oleg speed up as well. Oh, that's kind of annoying right in my ear. And we'll see what we've spotted. So whatever it was, quickly retreated. All right, so we spotted it again. Looks like we've got pretty good visibility, 25,000 yards. I think it's daytime right now. Yep, early morning. So we're going to chase this guy down. Why are these battleships only making 14 knots? All right, so it's actually an enemy Corvette, which kind of acts more like a minesweeper. But in any event, I'm happy to go after enemy Corvettes and sink them. All right, so another enemy ship is spotted. I'm assuming the Corvettes might be faster than us. I'm not quite sure, but this one's running too. So I'm going to... This one appears to be another enemy Corvette. So if we can destroy a couple enemy Corvettes in in close to the enemy shore, I'd be happy to do that. I don't think Corvettes can carry torpedoes, so we'll move in close here. It's dead in the water. Sure, we'll pick up survivors. All right, let's pause. So we've destroyed one of the enemy ships over here. We'll direct these guys. Actually, this guy took some damage, Svetlana. Or they're just detached? It's got the little asterisk, which usually means they took damage. But it doesn't look like it. So I'm not really sure. In any event, they're out of control for us. Alright, so if you sink this other heavy this other Corvette, in theory, we will accomplish our mission. You just have to sink two enemy ships and two KEs count as ships, although we won't get much in the way of victory points. Alright, so we sank the enemy ship. We will continue toward Kohlberg. We're going to slow down back to, uh, I think, 15 knots, we'll say. Move all of these ships in at 15 knots. I want to be mindful of the fact that I'm asking my uh, stokers to power battleships and other ships for, like, days on end. Maximum, um, maximum exertion. So we'll do that. We'll go ahead and pick up survivors. That's why I detached them to pick up survivors. All right, so we'll move again at ultra fast. We'll see if we detect anything else. They picked up survivors, and they're rejoining the fleet. Okay. So we detect more enemy ships. Not sure what they are. The fact that they're not instantly running away. No, nope. okay. Are these just more Corvettes? Because if they're more Corvettes, that's great. We could maybe eliminate the enemy's... Uh, Patrol fleet. We just detected another enemy ship. Is this just a bunch of mine layers or minesweepers out, like running coastal patrols? And they don't have any of their main ships like out to protect them? Seems weird. Yeah, uh, no. I want you to continue chasing. The other ships that are coming up behind can go ahead and lens support. We're going to have the heavy cruiser out front here. They're out of sight. Crap. More enemy ships are detected. These are warships. So the enemy fleet has been detected. So we've sunk a couple of patrol ships out early. We now have the enemy fleet in sight. At least two enemy heavy cruisers. We have our own two heavy cruisers, the Bokotai and the Oleg, out front. The one problem is that our heavy cruisers are likely of an inferior design. Not design, but we have quality one six-inch guns, which are actually very good weapons. But they do not fire as heavy a shell, obviously, as, as like traditional heavy cruisers. So I'm going to try and bring our battleships down here and cut them in two. I'm going to bring these battleships out front of these heavy cruisers. We'll see if we can sink the Freya. 
while this other battleship division... Whoa. I'm trying to do this at too fast a speed. Our battleships are running parallel to these enemy heavy cruisers. They're both dead in the water now. One of our destroyers looks like it might be going in for a torpedo attack. Yep, they fired some torpedoes. We hit an enemy Freya-class heavy cruiser with a torpedo. More destroyers are coming in for torpedo attacks. I don't even need to issue the orders. Ah, these battleships. All right. Let's go ahead and pause. So, two more torpedoes in the enemy heavy cruiser classes. The Germans might be out of heavy cruisers by the end of this. Their destroyers just kind of ran off. They might be engaging with my cruisers out there. I'm not quite sure. I can't really see. There's a couple of any... Bogotar, that's us. See, I'm not sure how much damage our heavy cruisers took as they were engaging the enemy. But it looks like we might score another major victory. We just sank another heavy cruiser. Two more enemy heavy cruisers are sunk. And we have now sunk four enemy heavy... Actually, five enemy heavy cruisers since the war has begun just a couple of months ago. And as a result, that's another victory for us. Yeah, I mean, I have a bunch of heavy cruisers in Asia. I do have some... Or six-inch heavy cruisers? Do we only have six-inch heavy cruisers, or do we have more than... I think we have more. I guess I'm not really sure. I haven't looked at all the classes. Looks like another Corvette. Can I order these guys to... Because my battleships aren't going to be faster than enemy Corvettes. But we're chasing an enemy Corvette across the Baltic. The Great Escape! Alright, sighting more enemy unknown ships over here. So they must have had a large number of Corvettes out at sea. I don't know if they were laying mines or sweeping mines or whatever. I think they act as mine layers, kind of. Or at least that used to be the role the KE took in Rule the Waves 1. But we're going to chase these guys out. Imagine a single heavy shell head on these guys. We'd probably sink them. But they're small maneuverable targets. Oh, wait. Merchant ships. Why don't you chase these guys? Max speed. Go get them. I'd actually rather go after an enemy merchant. I think it'd give me more, more victory points. Kogaius, thank you very much for the uh, Prime subscription there. I should actually probably turn those alerts off just for the video on demand, so that's... But do I do want to thank you for the subscription. Does every little bit means a lot. I'm serious. All right, so... That battle division's out of sight. I'm going to go ahead and chase this transport, frankly. Maybe these light cruisers can finish this Corvette off. They've kind of got it in a converging. If they, if they press the attack, if they don't pull a McClellan, they should be able to chase this guy down. They're far faster. Meanwhile, we'll have this medium merchant class attack by our battleships. Come on, you guys. Finish that Corvette off. Looks like he might be going in the circles. I wonder if they hit his rudder. Meanwhile, the merchant is dead in the water. And sunk. So we'll go ahead and detach someone to pick up survivors. It is, um, the date is March 16th of 1908. So it is now springtime. Springtime for Russia and the Tsar. Okay. Um, more ships spotted. Maybe this is another Corvette. I can't believe it let us go to battle with, like... Oh, he's still running in circles. It let us go to battle with, like, eight battleships. And the enemy just brought two heavy cruisers to play. That thing's gotta be dead. I just hit it, like, 12 times! They fixed the rudder right as we showed up. Alright, now they're dead in the water. They've sunk. So we've sunk... 
multiple enemy ships. I think we'll head back to port at cruise speed. And we'll just fast forward. And I'm assuming things will go quickly now. Oh no, we lost a destroyer! Why did we lose a destroyer? What did they even fight against? I guess there was a heavy cruiser out there. Aww. Well, that's lame. Alright. While retiring from the engagement, Grumpke is torpedoed by an enemy submarine. So we lost two destroyers. One torpedoed by sub, another sunk somehow. I don't really know how. Maybe Tortuga's right. Maybe those things are worthless. In any event, two destroyers sunk. Um, the enemy lost four corvettes, and they lost two transports, and they lost two heavy cruisers. That is very clearly a major victory for the Russian Empire. Uh, 6,696 total points for the Russians versus 49,455 for us. We got 64 for picking up survivors. We sank more than two enemy ships. Ship loft loss differential was huge. Two heavy cruisers against two destroyers. Four corvettes, two transports. That's, that's a big victory. So we'll go ahead and exit out of here. Russian major victory. Gain one prestige. Own victory points, 3,171 against 553 enemy victory points. The Battle of the South Baltic. So the, the French are still not at war with us. We are still allied to the British, but the French are very close to war with us. They could go to war with us at any moment. We are still somehow blockaded. I'm guessing, I guess in theory, you know, the Baltic is very narrow. We haven't destroyed enemy battleships or anything like that. Um, but at the end of the day, that is a victory for us against the German Navy. Another victory for us. And the German Navy has lost two more heavy cruisers and is down to two. So since this war has started, well, I didn't sink any of these battleships. These were all sunk in the previous war. But I think all these heavy cruisers, well, all but one of these heavy cruisers we've sunk. I think all the Freya classes. Wow! We sank four of their battleships in the previous war? In any event, that's a big victory for us. Um, 7,116 victory points to 2,539. Trade protection still good for us. We're still planning for the invasion of uh, the German possessions in China. And now we just have to hope that, uh, that we get a victory before this blockade cripples our economy. The unrest level is one. Um, and I'm kind of worried that if we don't figure out the, uh, the blockade, uh, we could be in some trouble. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump forward to April and see if anything else interesting happens in April. So the docks that we were constructed are completed. Naval gun research of 15-inch guns. So we can now research 15-inch guns. Granted, negative one quality, but still, 15-inchers. We don't even have a real dreadnought yet, by the way. The enemy sank two of our merchant ships with their 10 operational subs. We must have sunk one of their subs. Uh, so they got 10 victory points, but we're up by so much that really doesn't matter much. The operations of our ally Great Britain add 100 victory points. So the British fleet is presumably, maybe, blockading Germany as well. Gives us a small amount of victory points. And now we have a fleet battle. A fleet battle. Our crew quality still sucks. <laughs> it looks like we'll have four battleships. The enemy would have a dreadnought, 12 battleships. We would have four, five, nine battleships, really nine pre-dreadnoughts. And two heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, and nine destroyers. I suppose, I don't know if I want to fight that battle, but I do want to try and break the blockade. Ugh. If I refuse the battle, they get 300 victory points, which in the grand scheme of things isn't much. We're up by so much. But if we fight the battle and lose, that could be pretty disastrous. We've been at war for three months. Ugh. But if we get, a, I mean, if we have another crushing victory like the last one, I also don't know if that impacts in any way the uh, the likelihood of the French to get involved, right? Like, if we show weakness, does it uh, does it cause the French to get involved? I don't know. Our battleship crews are at least good experience for the most part. Everybody but the uh, Poltava. Do you get allied ships in your battles? I've never seen that before. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. So we have heavy cruisers, the Bogotar and the Oleg out front and scouting. Light cruiser Svetlana. 
It is April 26th, 1400 hours. Our battleships are in formation back here, making 16 and 14 and 14 knots. I think we'll have to bring the whole formation down to 14 knots. Unknown ship spotted. So we quickly spotted enemy ships off to the south. We'll have our heavy cruisers investigate, light cruisers as well, all of them set max speed. Whoops. We'll set our other light cruisers over here. Everybody's going to converge on the enemy ship that they've spotted. The pre-dreadnought battleships will go ahead and set their flank speed, which is 17 knots. The uh, quasi-dreadnoughts will set their speed of 17 knots as well, so that everybody's moving at the same speed in the battle line. Heavy cruisers and light cruisers racing south to investigate. It appears to be an enemy light cruiser. We've spotted more ships off in the distance. Probably the enemy battle line. Does look like we spotted the enemy battle line. I'm going to have our heavy cruisers fall in here. We'll have our battleships continuing to charge forward. We've spotted the enemy battle fleet. The entire enemy battle line. That is a lot of fucking ships coming up. I've got like... Th Do I have any destroyers? I've got one destroyer here. Two destroyers. Well, I'm glad we've got a light three destroyers. We have three destroyer, four destroyers shielding us. A handful of light cruisers. Our battleships swinging the line here. Two lines, a little bit separated. Heavy cruisers out front. I think we'll probably have them peel back when we get a little bit closer in. My heavy cruisers could get in front of the enemy line and, and cross their T. I think we've got a good enough angle to open fire. I think we have good gunnery. We also, I believe, have heavier shells than the enemy. Um, but they have more guns, obviously. Vastly more guns. It may come down to crew quality. Let's go ahead and have these cruisers pull back. You heard that crossing the T was the best tactic ever? I mean, I don't know if it's the best tactic ever. The Imperator, these guys, is their max speed? Are these the slower ones? Shit. There's other battleships back here, too. Our slower ships can't keep up. We're actually going to cause... We're going to show them our stern. We're going to pull this line back. So we can get everybody back in line. This is a bit of a mess. The enemy is going to let us cross their T as we retreat with our lead formation. Oh god, this light cruiser is just charging up there. I should really change this guy to AI. I don't want to manage him. All right, so our light cruisers are all over the place. Flora looks like it's badly hit. Our lead battleships have pulled back. The enemy is now charging forward, which is actually exposing them to having their T crossed. We'll slow speeds down to slower. Temporarily, in any event. So we've got two lines crossing each other as we attempt to pound the head of the enemy formation. Order these guys to screen. We're going to order this destroyer group to... I can't order my destroyers to screen. I can only order them to support. That's weird. Alright, the heavy cruisers are going to form up in core formation. Under AI control. Battle fleet is split in two, going in different directions. <sighs> How are we doing? Oh God! Look at that. We zoom in. Hit! 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 <laughs> Shit! This guy is a turret out of action. Fired 36 rounds, has scored zero hits from his main batteries. He's taken one medium hit, and four, no, four secondary batteries have hit. Alright. 
think we'll continue. We're going to go ahead and have these guys fall back as well. We are sailing away from Russia. I don't want slower. We'll do slow. The problem is my ships are probably too slow to escape. Actually, shit. I shouldn't have turned those battleships. The superior weight of enemy gunnery is probably going to tell. Now, I think we may actually have superior ships in terms of armor layout, at least some of our ships. There don't seem to be many enemy destroyers charging in at this time. So hopefully the fact that we're operating in relatively straight lines for some of our formations isn't too much of a risk. There's actually some exposed... I feel like there's almost an opportunity on some of these German battleships like the Mecklenburg and Prusen here that are out front kind of on their own. These guys are going too fast. We'll slow them down. Actually, they're not going that fast. They're all going the same speed, apparently, but... Maybe because they're maneuvering? I'm not quite sure. Okay. Enemy Pusen class may have actually gotten itself cut off from the rest of the German fleet. Well, I don't know if we have the speed to exploit that and race in and get it. I'm going to attempt to cut in here max speeds. Okay, so we'll have these pre-dreadnoughts in the lead. This enemy destroyer is a little bit too close for comfort, but it does look to be dead in the water. Prusen, meanwhile, is crossing at the T of our line, but it's also out here all by itself at relatively close range. they shooting at it. I don't see like any shell fragments around it. Okay, so we are chasing this enemy battleship. The enemy wants to retreat. I'm more than happy to let them. Try and cross the stern. The me this Mecklenburg over here might be in poor shape, too. It's hard to tell. I don't know why we're shooting way off here. There's an enemy. I can order them to shoot at the Prusen, I think. Yeah, they're shooting that way. Okay. These are pre-dreadnought ships, so they don't have the best accuracy. Their battleships must be pretty quick. All right, so we sank an enemy destroyer, at least. We're picking up survivors from it. The rest of the enemy battle fleet seems to be retiring, at least for the moment, as our battleships split between the Mecklenburg and the Prusen. We'll see how the uh, Imperator Magnus class fares in this you know, this is very Age of Sail-like, where it's like sailing between the enemy, firing down both sides of your ship. The Mecklenburg looks like it might be actually out of action. We're going to go ahead and send our uh, Imperator Pavel over there to see if it can finish it off. He's dead in the water, by, by all looks. Prusen isn't quite dead in the water, but he is moving slowly. He's still maneuvering. So we're going to cross the T with four battleships. Oh, no, we won't be able to. He's going to turn away from us. Okay, we're going to run alongside the Prusen. Best of five class battleships are coming up. Nightfall looks like it's coming here. We're at twilight. Come on, Imperator Pavel, finish off that Mecklenburg. Continue to maneuver slightly. No! The Imperator Alexander II is hit by a torpedo. From what? What fired the torpedo at it? I don't even know what shot the torpedo at it. Unless it was friendly fire, 
Unless it was the enemy battleship, I guess. I didn't actually see who fired at it. That's so dumb. Battleship fired torpedoes is one of the most inefficient things. It should not work. Why aren't my battleships firing their torpedoes then, huh? Uh, Imperator Alexander, there's flooding too much, more than 50%. How about you disengage? There's a port down here, you can try and make it to Labu. Go by yourself. Wait, which one is it? Alexander the first or second? It's this one. Go here. Go at five knots. Try and control your flooding. Get to port, get to safety. You don't need to do that. Wait, it's not moving at high speed. It's moving at five knots. What do you mean it increases flooding? Enemy battleship is hit by a torpedo, thank God. Let's sink this bastard. Another enemy battleship hit by a torpedo. It's the one we're circling here. You'd assume that it's a goner and that it's going down. Hit but not explosion? Better not be. Goddamn, get those Mark 14s out of here. So this enemy battleship, we're just kind of circling, continuing to pound it, hoping we can finish it. The Imperator Alexander's attempting to make it out to port. Oh, I really hope it doesn't turn around. All right, so we sank that guy. Let's go finish this other one off up here. I really hope this battleship continues on its orders to head back to port. It looks like it's turning. No, it's moving up at 10 knots. Get to port, damn you. Get to safety. If we sink two enemy battleships and they don't manage to sink one of ours, that's a huge victory. If it's two to one, I mean, it works, but at the end of the day, they've got so many more ships than us. And especially if France gets involved, we can't afford that. Did it say it was hit but not explosion? I guess I might have missed that. All right, that enemy battleship is sunk. So we sank at least one enemy destroyer and two enemy battleships. We'll move at fast speed. We'll just try and get back to port. The Alexander II might make it. Does it make it? Make it to port, sir. Yes, detach her. Yes. Yes, I think we made it to port. Everybody, you should go to port. Labau, everyone get in there. No, the light cruiser ran aground into entering port in the darkness. Why? Stupid. A major Russian victory. We didn't lose any battleships sunk. We did have one with heavy damage. The enemy lost two battleships sunk and one destroyer. So, obviously it wasn't decisive. This wasn't a Trafalgar. But, uh, medium damage for the light cruiser that I'm assuming ran aground. The other battleship suffered light damage. The one battleship of ours suffered heavy damage of the Imperator... Uh, Magnus class, but she still made it into port, and the enemy lost two battleships. So another major victory for the Russian Navy, another major victory for yours truly. And that, gentlemen, is very good news. Major Russian victory, gain one prestige. So we're up three prestige since the start of the war. 3,400 more victory points against 1,525. The battle, the second Battle of Gotland. Okay. All right. It still doesn't break the blockade. I don't... I guess they just have so many more ships than us. But in any event, the enemy is now down to 11 pre-dreadnought battleships against our 9. And they are at 1 battleship versus our 4. Now, granted, I think we've got like 4 or 5 battleships in Asia... So that makes things a little bit more complicated. Um, we are targeting 
the German possession in China for an invasion, which we're spending a fair amount of money trying to do. Would be great if that actually made some progress. But um, there you have it. That was a victory. Multiple victories. Multiple great victories for yours truly in this episode. Um, our battleships... Looks like the Imperator Alexander II is going to be in port for three more months, while the other battleships of the of the fleet have one more month in port. The uh, Devon... I can't even pronounce that! Apostlov of the Avastafi class, pre-dreadnoughts, is an elite crew. They have four battle stars, and they are elite. So they're they're doing their job. Meanwhile, the rest of our crew, for the most part, are starting to come up to at least fair training. We have a couple of ships that are still poor, but overall, ships coming up to fair status. Budget is leveling out. We're still in the red. I'd like to invest some money in some new ships, but I don't want to get to a point where I can't continue the construction of the ships that I have underway. Our submarines are just a little over a year until they are uh, ready to come into the into the conflict. And, I mean, we've only lost, like, two destroyers. I'd like another destroyer class, but I don't want to bankrupt ourselves building it. So we'll probably wait as long as the war continues to go well, as long as France continues to stay out of it. Um, we can We can continue down this line, I think. With that being said, guys... I think that's going to do it for this episode. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I did want to live stream it, but um, we'll see how things play out in our next episode uh, with the Admiral Istorici. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing the name or if I'm completely changing it. Gamer. And we'll see what happens to him now that uh, Alexander, the uh, Secret Service individual, uh, is in uh, the palace with the Tsar. We'll see what comes of that. We'll see what comes of uh, the historical gamer and if he is accused of treason, accused of murdering uh, the previous head of the Navy. But how can he be accused of treason when in just four months in command of the Russian fleet, he has sunk two German battleships, five German heavy cruisers, and a host of smaller ships? How could you possibly question the loyalty of such a tremendous sailor in charge of the Russian fleet? That will be for next time. Until next time, though, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you very much for watching, and I'm out.